Hello everyone and welcome to Change Bible Study. Kind of good news and bad news. We've reached the end by God's grace of another week. At the same time this concludes this week's study, which has been a study of the blessings of the prophetic gift. Different aspects of our lives. We've covered a bunch of them. We've talked about the blessing of education. We've talked about the blessing upon our health. We've talked about the blessing even upon publishing or producing books and writings that, that bless others and, and feed their faith. We've even talked about yesterday's lesson which dealt with the blessing upon theology. How this gift guides us when we reach points of controversy or, or disagreement or confusion. The Bible and his prophets make it plain the way to go. Today when we wrap up this week's lesson we want to talk about the blessing upon mission. The blessing upon ministry and how the prophetic gift blesses when we go and preach the word of the Lord. I pray, Father, now, and we pray that you give us a spirit of wisdom and understanding to see how we have this gift of prophecy and how it fuels and how it, it gives life to our ministry. And so we pray and we thank you in your name. Amen. When you go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 44, and Isaiah chapter 44, and in verse 7, Bible says, hmm, it says in Isaiah chapter 44, Who, as I, shall call and declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have I not told thee from that time? Have I not declared it? You are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, is there no God? I know not any. Go over a couple more chapters in Isaiah chapter 49. In Isaiah 49 and in verse 6, he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, to restore the preserved Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. God has established his church as light, as as, as, as witnesses to his gospel, to his joy, to his promises and his faithfulness. So when you think about the prophetic gift, it's, it's that gift, the prophets and their message is what we declare. I think of it this way. When you have a radio, and uh, you know how radios mostly, some are AM, FM, some have CDs, and some are, you know, MP3 connections, all kind of things. But every single radio, I don't care what it is, it has to have a volume button. And so when I think about where we are in relation to the prophetic ministry from the Bible and even after the Bible through the ministry of other prophets like Ellen White, I think about how we today, we aren't to call to necessarily change the channel. Sometimes we think we got to reinvent the wheel. You know, we got we to spice things up or, or shake things up. And, and in reality, God has put us to be like radios and, and we don't really need to worry about changing the channel or changing the station. God is calling for us to simply turn up the volume. I don't have to change what's been done. I don't have to reinvent it. I simply have to proclaim what is. Turn up the volume is what the Lord wants us to do. That's what he's ordained us to do. We don't have to come up with any new theories. We don't have to come up with any new ideas. We simply have to take the ideas that he's given us and let everybody know. Cry aloud, one prophet said, and don't spare it. Don't turn it down. When you think about this guiding and mission, it gives us a, a sense of, of confidence that, you know what, I don't have to reinvent it. I just have to be faithful. Cry out. Turn up the volume through any means necessary. Let everybody know that not only does Jesus live, Jesus loves them. And he's coming back to take us home soon. You know, when I think about this, I go to another verse in Matthew chapter 28. This is what we understand in Matthew chapter 28 as the Gospel Commission. And you can really sum it up in three words. In Matthew chapter 28 and in verse number 19 and 20, the Gospel Commission that Jesus gives, he gave to his disciples, he left it to the apostles, he gives it to us today. In verse 19 of Matthew 28, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. So what do you have in verse 19? The affirmation, the call and commission that we have. Go, baptize, teach. Well, let me say it in order. Go, teach, baptize. See, you got to go out. You got to step out. 
before anyone can learn, before anybody can have the opportunity to be taught, I gotta go. If I go, I gotta teach. I have to share. I have to minister. Because it's only then, as I teach, that I can then baptize. Sometimes we skip over. We just go and try to baptize. Sometimes we don't go and we wonder why nobody's being baptized. It's a very consequential, very orderly idea. Go, teach, baptize. Go, teach, baptize. Go, teach, baptize. What do we teach? Why do we go? Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Friends, that's what we teach. Whatever he's commanded us, the ministry and the words of his prophets, teach them to others, show them to others as he leads you. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be afraid because here's the promise. You're really not the one who's teaching. He says in the latter part of verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. In other words, the world won't end until we've gone and taught and baptized. And when we do this, he will always be with us, and even through his spirit working in us. And once everyone's had an opportunity to hear from our going and our teaching, and all those who choose to be baptized have been baptized, this is the retirement plan. This is the consolation. The world will end. And as we know it, this life will be over and we'll be able to receive Jesus Christ and a whole new kingdom. We can't enjoy that. We can't experience that. We can't go there until we go here, next door, upstairs, across the way, overseas, wherever he sends. Just go. Just teach. Just baptize. Do you want to pray with me for a blessing? I want to pray for a blessing on our ministry, a blessing on our going, and a blessing on our doing what God has called us all to do. Let's pray that, Lord, we have a message to give, and we don't have to reinvent this wheel. We simply have to turn it. We don't have to change the channel. We simply have to turn up the volume. And when we do this, we have confidence that there will be those who learn, and there will be those who will take their stand and accept your righteousness, accept your gift of salvation, and they will be baptized, putting on a new robe and a new life and a new being, so that one day soon you'll be able to then collect those who you baptize and take us home forever. God, may we all accept this gift. Friend, before you go, you have to have it. You have to have Jesus in your heart. And I want to invite you to accept him today. If you want to go first, get it. Get Jesus in your heart. And know now that he forgives and he loves and he wants you to be his very own. If you accept him now as your Lord and your Savior, as your master and your king, the one who orders your life and works all your problems out for you and through you, I want to pray now that you just raise your hand and say, Jesus, I accept you now. You are my salvation. You are my master. Now, Lord, show me where, show me how, show me when to go. Because I already know why I go. I go because you love me. So, Father, I pray this prayer upon all who are listening who accept you now. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for this calling. In your name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, friends. Until next time, please remember, a change 